What's going on guys? ZTA Prime back here again. Today I got some really exciting news for Odroid XU4 owners. So the guys over at the Odroid Retro Arena have released their version 1.5 build and it is really awesome. There's a lot of new fixes, there's a bunch of changes and some additions. Before I even get into any gameplay, I want to go over a few of those changes. If you're looking to download the new release, I will leave a link in the description. You can go ahead and grab version 1.50. You will have to start fresh with this one, but going forward, you will be able to upgrade to new releases if you're on version 1.50. All right, so here's a few of the changes and additions to version 1.5. It's built from version 1.1. Basic CEC function has been installed. The built-in scraper is now working correctly. The Drastic Emulator is now pre-installed, so you can play your DS games here. Same with the Sega Saturn Emulator. Yaba and Shiro is pre-installed with a new controller GUI with a few extra features. The 3DO Emulator, called 4DO, has had threaded enhancements, so it should run a lot better on this build. And finally, something I've been really excited about. LRA Cast, or Recast, whatever you want to call it, now supports Sammy, Atomus Wave games, and Naomi games. So that's a really big thing for a single board computer to do, and it's actually running them really well. I'm going to get into some gameplay in just a second, but the last thing on the list, something that's been asked countless times. ORA 1.5 now supports the Odroid N64 case out of the box. It comes pre-installed with splash art for the systems and emulation station. This has been a long time coming. Right now, these are static images. In the future, they will support art packs similar to ES themes, gift packs, and some way to view your system stats here. I know a lot of people were interested in getting videos up and running on this screen in the N64 case, but the problem is, when you have a video running on that tiny screen, the CPU can take a hit anywhere from 15% to 25% usage. It will decrease emulation performance, so they have left it out now. Maybe in the future somebody can find some sort of fix to make it run a little better. But for now, I actually think it's a good idea not to have it because the CPU is taking a big hit when playing a video on that screen. And last but not least, they've added Sharp X1 support. So with all of that out of the way, I want to go ahead and give you guys a look at some gameplay. I'm really excited about the Atomus Wave and Naomi emulation. Plus, Dreamcast performance has increased significantly since the last build. The Raycast developers have been working on it really hard. Lots of updates have been coming out to Libretro. So we also got some of those improvements using the LR core. All right, so here we are running the new ORA 1.5. Now, if you want to get a Thomas Wave and Naomi up and running, you need to go into the BIOS folder, find the DC folder, and there's a README in there, and it tells you exactly what BIOSes you need for Naomi and a Thomas Wave to run. So even though the scraper is working here, some games just didn't scrape correctly for me with Naomi or a Thomas Wave. I'm not sure if it's the naming convention or not, but if you've already got some video snaps and things like that, it's all supported in this build. Also, here's Super Nintendo. I already had this stuff set up, so I just dropped it in the ROMs folder. First game we're gonna test out here is Metal Slug 6. The controller I'm using is a PS4 controller. I do have it plugged into USB, but Bluetooth will also work with the correct CSR 4.0 dongle. We get the BIOS here. Need to get used to these buttons here. It's mapped a little different from the Neo Geo Metal Slug games. But as you can see, it is running really well. Now, I originally had this on an external drive, all of my games, but for some reason, it took a long time to load these Atomus Wave and Naomi games. Come to find out, the XU4 is a little different the way it transfers all the files over if you're using an external drive. You need to let it sit for at least 20 minutes to make sure that everything's transferred over. For instance, with the Raspberry Pi running RetroPie, if you insert a USB drive with a RetroPie mount, the light will stop blinking when it's done. For this, it won't ever stop blinking, at least in my case, so I needed to let it sit a little longer for it to work correctly. So now this is all running from the SD card.
to exit any of these games, press your start button and your hotkey. Whatever you mapped is your hotkey, bring us back in the emulation station. I gotta test another game here, Dolphin Blue. If you've never played this game and you like Metal Slug, you'll like this game. If you like Metal Slug and you love dolphins, you'll love Dolphin Blue. Really awesome game. It's Metal Slug with a lot of dolphins. So far it's running really well. We'll get up here a little bit, hop on a dolphin, and we'll get a lot of explosions going on. We'll be able to really tell if it's running the game at full speed here. Yeah, I don't even notice a single hiccup with this game. Moving over to some Dreamcast emulation, I'm just going to test one real quick and I'm not going to make you sit through the whole loading process. Fighting Vipers 2. Round one. Let the action begin. Go! So this wasn't a stellar performer on the original Dreamcast hardware, and here I do notice a little bit of slowdown. It's definitely not bad for a ARM-based single board computer and light years ahead of the Raspberry Pi, but we still got a little ways to go with this. Of course, there are Dreamcast games that run at full speed on the XU4 no problem. This was one that I knew had some issues and I wanted to see if they were fixed. It's a lot better than it was, and I could actually play this all day and have no problems. But I do notice that it's not running flawlessly here. You win. Time to test out some Naomi emulation. Now, one of my favorite games of all time is Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I absolutely love the Dreamcast version because that's the one I grew up on. I love the idea of unlocking the characters with points and things like that, but you can't beat the arcade version. And this is the arcade version of Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Marvel Capcom. Capcom. And I have not tested the Naomi version on the XU4, so I'm kind of going in here blind. I hope it works. This is one of those games I have played a lot of, and I can tell you that this is running really, really well. I've emulated this or tried to emulate this on a ton of different hardware, I'm willing to bet that we are at full speed here.
Okay, yeah, if we were going to slow down, it would have slowed down when Morgan and Akuma just did their specials there. It's really awesome to see this running full speed on an ARM-based single board computer. I'm pretty impressed with this. And finally, I'm going to test out Sega Rally for Sega Saturn. This is using the Yaba Senshiro Saturn emulator. I know this kind of turned into a whole Sega video, but I've been really excited about this release and I have to test it. In fact, I'd love to just do a straight up dedicated video Sega to Rally Naomi and a Thomas Wave on the XU4. If you guys are interested in something like that, let me know in the comments below. So new to this emulator, if you press start and select, as long as your select is not mapped as your hotkey, you'll get this little menu, the one you see in the top right hand corner. We can map the controllers differently, we can exit the emulator, and there's a few other options here. The emulator being used here is Yaba Sanshiro. Now I have messed around with this on x86 PCs before. It's not as accurate as some other Saturn emulators, but it does get the job done. I do see artifacts here and there that I don't see if I'm using Manafin or SSF. But this isn't an x86 CPU, this is an ARM CPU, and to see Saturn even booting up and running here is really awesome. We'll see how this does. I can tell you right now that we are not at a steady 60 FPS, I'd say more of a 40 to 50, but the Sega Saturn didn't run at a steady 60 FPS. This is playable. We're getting some artifacts in the road up here, but all that can be ironed out in later releases. And again, there are games that'll run at full speed in this emulator on the XU4 like it sits right now. It's really trying with Sega Rally here, but it's not quite there yet. So that's it for this video guys, I really appreciate you watching. I'm really impressed with this build, ORA 1.5, if you want to download it I'm going to leave links in the description, remember you do have to start fresh with this, but once you get everything set up it's going to be well worth it. If you don't already own an Odroid XU4 I'm going to leave links in the description where you can pick one up, they are a bit more expensive than a Raspberry Pi, but as you saw here we can achieve better performance in most emulators. And if you love N64, the XU4 does Nintendo 64 emulation really, really well. If you could, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, don't forget to check the links out in the description, and like always, thanks for watching.